My name is Kwabana Chenche Inibwati. Many thanks for joining us here on News Today. To our very first story this hour, and the opposition New Patriotic Party is demanding the Electoral Commission makes public the contract document between the Commission and technology firm STL in order to put to rest an ongoing debate on the role of the company in Ghana's election process. The exact role of Superlock Technologies in the 2012 election has generated a lot of controversy over the past weeks. Interior Minister Prosper Bani, in a statement recently, suggested the company was contracted by the EC to transmit election results in 2012, contrary to an earlier claim by the EC that the company played no such role. Now, the EC, however, brought some clarity to the issue yesterday by insisting that STL was only in charge of the biometric devices and not the transmission of electoral results. But speaking on news desk earlier today, Director of Communications, Director of Elections, I beg your pardon, of the new patriotic party, Martin A.J. Mensah Kosa, said his party is not backing down on its demand for clarity on the issue. They are demanding the Electoral Commission publishes the contract details with Superlock Technologies to bring to an end the long-standing debate on the role of the company. Um, you may recall that on your very platform, mm. okay, Joy, Joy News File, after this letter by the minister, carefully written and put out, that SEO was or had been contracted to transmit election results, the deputy for that ministry, James Agalga, emphatically defended it and said that it was not an error and dared the electoral commission to produce the contract documentation. In his staring, he said that it will be made known to Daniel the truth of this matter and that they stood solidly by it. The electoral commission they knew per the document of agreement between the EC and the SEO was contracted to do safe. This was emphatic on your network. I don't see how just media denial deals with this matter. I don't know what has become of that request from the ministry through Agalga for government, sorry, for the Electoral Commission to make public the documentation on this matter. I think it's quite a serious matter, and that is where, for me, the matter rests. The controversy has been deep vis a vis what we are being told now and the further defense to the letter that came from the interior ministry by the deputy. And I don't know what, whether the commission is not interested in actually putting this matter to rest by paying heed to the, the request from the ministry to lay public the document that you know, spells out this contract. So that you put this matter to rest. As it stands now, I think the controversy has been deeply. There's a matter between government and the electoral commission. Now we don't know whom to believe. But I thought that a matter as serious as this required that you put out proper documentation, spelling out A and B for the record. You don't treat it as just mere media commentary. Because somebody has carefully put out this matter. A minister for that matter. And it's generated all of this controversy. And I'm saying that beyond that, you have been dared as a commission to produce the documentation. Because you are the mother organization, you have the authority. Once you put that out, you put this matter to rest. We're well, still on issues of election, and the media is being cautioned against declaring results in the upcoming November polls. Commissioner responsible for the Upper West Region, Hajia Shahada to Maiga, says though the media is allowed to make do with provisional results, it should not overstep its bounds by declaring winners of the poll, particularly that of the presidential ballot. She says this is necessary to protect the credibility of the polls as well as prevent a possible mayhem due to misreporting by some media houses. She was speaking at a capacity workshop building organized for journalists in the Upper West Region, from where Rafiq Salam now reports. The one-day capacity building workshop for media practitioners in the Upper West Region was organized by the Electoral Commission of Ghana with support from USAID. It is to equip them with the requisite information in order to give the public fair reportage on the election. In an opening remark, Electoral Commission's member responsible for the Upper West Region, Hadja Shahada Tumaiga, cautioned media houses in the country against declaring the winner of the presidential race in the November polls. She stated that the media has a right to call election results but should not arrogate to themselves the powers of the EC to declare victors and vanquish in the November polls. She warned 
only journalists who are affiliated with the Ghana Journalists Association, GJA, would be accredited to cover the election. This is going to be channeled through yes, GJA, even from the district to the region, the region to national. And then when they come, the national compiles the entire list, bring it to us, then we can now go by the, the list of uh, the GJA and give accreditation. So if this is not done and you don't get accreditation, don't blame the commission. That is why we are informing you way ahead of time so that you know the criteria we are going to use this time to get you accredited. APA was regional director of the Electoral Commission, Azu Boskos, called on prospective voters who for one reason or the other could not register during the last election to do so when the register is reopened later this month. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Yeah, in the crowd, my name is Kwabna Chenche in the board. And let's now turn our attention to some issues with education. And we all do know that uh, occultism has become a problem in senior high schools. That's according to the Ghana Education Service, which is blaming the issue on poor parenting. Well, earlier today on News Desk, we've been speaking to uh, the PRO for the, institution, for the institution. And he's been saying quite a number, he's been telling us a number of measures that uh, his outfit is putting in place to ensure that the situation is carried. Well, among the many things he's suggesting, Justin, is that we all help in praying for the many children. Headmistress of Wesley Girls came to the ministry for the Ghana Education Service to meet my director, but could not get him. Uh, my director was in another all important uh, meeting. I had a tete, tete meeting with the woman. She narrated the story, which is far different from your reportage or the what your media houses are reporting about the Wesley girls, the story is different. And yeah, the practice of occultism in the school, if an individual is reading a book, it's a different thing. Mm. The practice, like having an association or a group in the school, is not free. Okay. According to her, right. it's not free. Uh, freedom of expression, mm. freedom of association, freedom of religion does not work so much as far as little children are concerned. In the fear of God, and these little children should not be allowed to do whatever pleases them. When we begin to allow our little children, do you allow your child in your home or your dear brother in your home to do whatever pleases them in the house which is not the special institution? No, you don't. Your parents don't understand. They don't allow them to do that. Okay. So How can Ghana Education Service allow little children to be on their own to practice whatever that, that, that it means that there's no discipline in the school. Well, earlier today on the AM show, my colleague Mamavi Ousu Abwaje interacted with uh, one gentleman who practiced occultism some time back. Frederick Boma Ahinkra has been sharing his story. Occultism, it's not just one branded occultism, but we always see it as, 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 as just one. But it involves a lot, but the major thing you'll be taught, I mean, depending on the branch of occultism you would get involved is, is to get to know the hidden. So things that are hidden, you know them. That things ordinary people can't see, ordinary people can't do, you do them because it's hidden. So you have been elevated to a certain stage that you would know what is hidden. So basically, basically that is what you taught, that you know the hidden things. It's very real, it's, it's, it's really happening. And it starts from the secondary schools, I must be frank. It's, it's, I mean, like, that is where it really starts. And it's very dangerous for somebody to start from that part. Because if you're starting from there, <laughs> it's going to take a long for you to come out. If you're starting from there and you come out from there, then that means it's something else. And you see, it's because, you know, um, uh, it's the future leaders are almost there. So everybody wants to start somewhere. If you really want to go somewhere, as in coach, it's been said, I mean, like, you have to go through the secondary school and stuff. So then they catch you young there, like they, they um, try to um, teach you so many things from there. So like you become very interested. Everybody in secondary school, like let me say, would want to um, um, be a, um, a better man or a better woman in the you future. You want to pass your exams, yes. you want I mean, to be the brilliant. Mm, yes, you want to be at a from a Christian home, no. Your, your parents can be praying or like be the pastors they are, but what about you, the child? 
I wanted a kind of hug, you know. I wanted to be recognized. I wanted to be there. That um, I always wanted to be there. I wanted to be at the top. That if things, that everybody should see I'm there. I wanted power to rule. I wanted to be up there. I wanted to be recognized. I, among my peers, I wanted to be the head. And I always use, uh, like our Bible says, you know, it's good to be the head and never the tail. So I always wanted to be there. To some other stories now, and Citizen Ghana Movement has won the case it filed in court against the Attorney General and the Transport Ministry. The group filed the suit at the High Court over the controversial 3.6 million Ghana City bus branding contract. Now, members asked the court to issue an order directing the Minister of Transport to make full disclosure on the contract for the branding of the 116 bus rapid transit. Now, leading member of the group Coffee Bento tells Joy News the ruling is a victory for the rule of law, seeing that it serves as the basis for all to demand a due from political appointees. He has been speaking to me on news desk. The issue, you know, the bus branding issue is one issue. Mm. But underlying that one simple issue is a very profound issue. And that issue is the citizen's right to information about what government is doing, okay? And what we did in this case was to use the constitutionally guaranteed provision, you know, of that right mm. to ask our government to account to us concerning the bus uh, branding thing. And the court has granted our uh, request or relief. But in the judgment that was read this morning, the judge took his time to go through the law, the jurisprudence, the constitution. He went as far as going to the European Human Rights Court. He used cases from other jurisdictions. And he clearly set out that the right to information in a democracy like ours is sacrosanct, and that government must respect it, and that the failure to pass a right to information bill does not in any way take away from the citizen's right to information. To that extent, therefore, in a democracy like ours where it is important that government officials be accountable, they must provide these pieces of information whenever citizens request them. So this has effectively made the right to information bail. Okay? And now we all know how and when and why we can go and collect information wherever we need it. He even set up the parameters, he set out the rules for doing so. You know, so, so the bus branding, yes, we are happy and we will go for the information under that. But clearly, this is bigger than just the bus branding. It has given us the room by which we can request information from government on any and everything that is public. Okay. With, with specific emphasis on the issue of bus branding scandal, uh, we are told that Smarties uh, just some few weeks ago made the final payment uh, on that particular uh, issue. So uh, is there anything more to pursue in that direction? Well, you see, so we are told and we are told and we are told, okay? Mm. Um, now, what we are able to do as citizens, you to verify I, what you are being told. We can verify what we are being told. Mm. We can demand the actual documentation so we can make up our mind for ourselves. Mm. We are going to ask them for every piece of document regarding this one, okay? And then we are not going to be at the mercy of officials who choose what to tell us and what not to tell us. And now people are going to know that when you hold power on behalf of the people, they will come and ask you to account. You're watching news today here on your joining news channel on Multi TV. We're taking a break. We'll return shortly with a lot more stories. Don't go away. Many thanks for staying with us here on News Today to some more stories now. And President John Dramani Mahama has touted Ghana's economy as one of the best in the world in spite of many challenges facing the world. According to him, the prudent economic measures put in place by the country's economic management team has ensured that the Ghanaian economy remains resilient. President Mahama made this observation when he addressed the chiefs and people of Akumufi as part of his accounting to the people tour in the eastern region on Tuesday. Correspondent Kofi Sian was there and has father's report. 
The president's three-day tour of the eastern region is to inspect ongoing projects, commission completed projects undertaken by his administration, and break grounds for the commencement of new ones. The tour will also afford him the opportunity to interact with chiefs and residents and account for his stewardship since he assumed office as the president barely three years ago. President Mahama kicked off his tour to the region by paying a courtesy call on the paramount chief of Manyak area. Chiefs, elders and opinion leaders as well as team and NBC supporters and government officials were there to lend their support and cheer him on. Most of them could not hide their excitement when the president arrived at the forecourt of the Manya Krobo Chiefs Palace where a derba was organized to welcome the president. Welcoming the president, the chief of Akusi and spokesperson of the traditional council, Nene Asadaho, who spoke on behalf of the Kono Nene Sakite II, commended government for the massive infrastructure development it has executed in the Krobo land. He mentioned the construction of several road networks and the expansion of educational and health infrastructure, among many others. I am amazed and very proud of the numerous projects that have been implemented in my traditional area. I am particularly happy about the attention given to education sector. It is no mean achievement to see the completion of 16 normal classroom blocks, two-story blocks, two-story administration block, 12 unit classroom blocks, two teachers quarters, and two uh, community senior high schools in both uh, lower and upper. I can say three, as well as our neighbors Yilo Global. Expressing gratitude for the unflinching support he has received from the people of Krobo over the years, President Mahama assured residents of government assistance in all sectors on the establishment of the first public university in the eastern region to train agricultural and environmental science students. President Mahama noted that the school will adopt research as its focus to help farmers in the area. He added that in his next term of office, his government will focus on training the youth to acquire hands-on skills to turn the economy around. We have worked on several projects in Manya alone. For instance, we did the corn water expansion project. And in the past, when the water projects were done, they used to forget to connect the surrounding towns, and so they didn't benefit from the water project. The water was treated and it was pumped straight to Accra. But under the current expansion we did at the Pong Water Station, we made sure that all the surrounding communities also benefit from the water. And so there are many of the communities in Manya traditional area that are benefiting from clean drinking water because of the expansion of the Pong uh, Water Project. Aside from that, we are building a new assembly complex for the Krobo girls because the Nesekite prioritizes education. It's one of his major major priorities and so we focus on produ and providing more educational facilities and so we're doing this assembly complex for the Krobo girls. We're doing a new community day senior high school in Obopa. Unfortunately the Obopa, thank you Obopa. <laughs> Unfortunately the contractor has been a bit slow because he started at the same time as some of the community senior high schools have commissioned already and he's supposed to have been done by now. I hear he's on the fourth story. I've asked the Ministry of Education to issue him with a warning letter to speed up, otherwise we'll have to take some sanctions against him. We are working on the two-story girls' dormitory block at Acro SHS. Acro SHS, thank you. <laughs> We're working on a three-story dormitory block uh, for boys at the Manya Krobo Senior High School. And we're doing several classroom blocks at Agomanya Methodist School, Agomanya um, GHS, uh, Yokuyim DA Primary School.
president later met with the traders at Spoon. He interacted with them and assured he will facilitate soft loans for the traders. He, however, urged them to form cooperatives for easy accessibility to the loan facility. At Akwamufi, the Paramount Chief Odeneho Kwafu Akoto II enumerated challenges facing his area. President John Mahama, in his speech, observed that in spite of the many challenges facing the world economy, Ghana has been resilient due to the prudent measures put in place by the government and its economic management team. President Mahama will continue his accounting to the people tour in the eastern region Wednesday. He is expected to interact with the residents and commission several projects in the Achim area. To some more stories now, and the Central Regional Police Command is asking political parties in the region to stick to the peace plan they agreed ahead of the November polls. According to the Regional Police Commander DCOP, Kuriba Yagi, if all the political parties use internal mechanisms to address their grievances and report errant behaviors to the police for the necessary actions, the election will see no violence. Speaking at the meeting with representatives of the political parties in the Central Region, he urged the parties to report misconduct of opposition parties to the police administration for swift action and prompt response without fear or favor. To ensure that we have a, a balance free uh, election and that we do more education so that the youth, or what I always term the foot soldiers, understand that they are not there to always uh, uh, rise up and destroy properties instead of uh, adopting party structures to resolve their disagreements or differences or conflict. If there's any conflict in a party, uh, you have to use your party mechanisms. You have, uh, we know that they, we all agreed here that we have intra-party and inter-party conflict. So when they happen, you are supposed to use your uh, your party structures, and even uh, that should be the, the police should be the last resort. If you are unable to use the structures, then you go to court or you come to the police. So we should all. I believe in education. So we are going to educate the people that we should perform the side of our contract. If we're a political party, if we're a youth, what are you supposed to do? and we outlined all that during. So you are supposed to help the party win. You are supposed to pay your dues. You are supposed to ensure that you develop your skills so that you don't go around taking over uh, uh, toilets and the rest. So if you agree that if we have differences, and that's what they all agree, that we will use party structures to uh, resolve them, then the police work will just uh, be done. Because Uh, the political parties pledge their support and commitment to the peace process to ensure uh, peaceful elections in November. We're taking a break here on News Today. When we come back, we'll bring you business, then sports, as well as some international updates all coming up. Coming up ahead. Stay with us. And now time for some business and tax, uh, like taxpayers in the country are generally satisfied with the reforms that the new Income Tax Act 896 has brought on board. According to them, the new act is making clearer some provisions in the old act to facilitate tax mobilization. They spoke to Joy Business during the Ghana Revenue Authority seminar on the new Income Tax Act. Companies that were under tax holidays or if you like industrial concessions, the law says that yes, if you are on tax holiday, you should pay a 1% tax. Either to it was not so. If we're on tax holidays, you wouldn't pay tax at all. We think that it doesn't make sense. At least pay something, because you are also contributing to whatever uh, uh, problems that we have by way of uh, 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 you know, environmental degradation or whatever. So once you are contributing to it, then you also should, you also contribute 1%. Are you getting off your income? If you make a loss, you will not pay. It is on the chargeable income. So if there's no uh, income, then certainly you wouldn't pay any tax. Then again, we have also looked at the fact that uh, capital allowances cannot be deferred. What it means is that if you are supposed to enjoy a capital allowance in a particular year, the whole of the capital allowance must actually be enjoyed. And two, if you are an employee, we are saying that if you make a contribution towards worthwhile courses, then it should be taken as a, a, a deduction before they compute your taxes. And then apart from that, we are also looking at a situation where uh, if you are an employee, then you take up a mortgage loan. And that loan is used to put up a residential facility. You should also benefit by way of a, a, a deduction. And this one is for 
one deduction in one's lifetime. The projection from the IMF um, says that the, our, our, our country is losing so much revenue through tax exemptions. But in this new tax law, we are seeing um, more of the exemptions being taken out. So we realize that um, some industries which before in the under 592 were exempted, in these eight nines, they are supposed to pay tax, even some at 1 percent, all trying to get more revenue for the economy. So we expect that the economy should do well under this new. I think the new act has made clearer certain things that were confused in the old act. And I think in reading the new act, you get a sense of understanding which will reduce so many private ruling which people seek from the Commissioner General. I think the highlight on the new Income Tax Act is a good act. And now we've been able to understand certain basic things. For instance, when it comes to the educational institutions, uh, they are now saying that educational institutions that are not state-sponsored will pay tax. And I think it's also fair, because they are foreign educational institutions in the country. So if previously they are not paying tax, the Ghanaians were not paying tax, they will also not be paying tax. But for now that the new act has made it clear that every educational institution, no matter the level you are, if you are not sponsored by the state, you pay tax. It's, it's a key thing. And that's also opened our eyes to know. From tax, from tax awards to some entrepreneur awards, and the African Network of Entrepreneurs has released a short list of nominees for its 2016 Ghana Startup Awards. The maiden edition of the awards would celebrate indigenous startup businesses that are contributing to the country's socioeconomic growth and putting Ghana on the global map. Echo Mensah is the chief executive officer, and he's been telling Joy Business what went into the selection process. We opened nominations to the public and also to the uh, over a thousand startups that we had in the startup network as members. Um, so for we had um, these nominations go on and then we had over a thousand nominations across the country. And then through the nominations we were able to put together um, a jury that is made up from representatives in the various startup support organizations in the country. And then this jury helped put together the shortlist that is now the final list of nominees for the awards. Okay, so what are some of the categories um, for the awards? Well, we have 16 categories in all. Um, out of the 16 categories, we have 10 sectors, um, ranging from food processing, agribusiness, health, education. And then we have some special awards being the Startup Entrepreneur of the Year, the Startup of the Year. We have the Student Startup of the Year. And then we have the non ghanaian owned Startup of the Year, because you know we have quite a number of startups that are not necessarily owned by Ghanaians, but they also deserve the recognition. So uh, in all, we have 16 categories. Um, that we are going to award on that day. So there are some awards and nominations out there for some entrepreneurs in Ghana. So that will be it for the news. And, but you can join me exactly 1 to 1.30 for more. We'll be linking up to the United States with my colleague, George Ravi, who is monitoring affairs there regarding what's actually happening between the World Bank and some um, leaders in the, on, the, on the continent and, of course, globally. We'll be looking at that in detail. What is it that Anglo Godashante is explaining as a reason for the withdrawal of Rand Gold investment here in Ghana. We'll be looking at that in detail on the marketplace. So join me, make a date with us here on the marketplace. My name is John Kojo Amwakon. Sport is up next. So that's how we wrap up on news today, this afternoon on your Joy News channel here on Multi TV. My name is Kwabna Chen Chen Hinebwati. Remember to visit myjoyonline.com for a lot more stories. The Marketplace comes up next with John Amarco. Many thanks to your company.